Last week, we've talked about live contracts and we've seen how we can play a deterministic game as chess using the blockchain. So let the, let's take that example now in practice. For instance, my opponents will open. As is typical with a game of chess, he will write down his move and I will do the same. And we can continue doing that. I'll do a move as well. And we'll continue with that. So when it's a friendly game, this works well. We both have a copy of the game and we can see that everything is correct. But what if our copy wasn't the same and somebody has made a mistake, either accidentally or on purpose? Then it would be really difficult to find out who has made a mistake and we would have a dispute. So how can we solve that? Let's reset the game. What we can do is my opponent can do a move and once again he can write down his move and now he'll sign it. So I will do a move as well. And I'll also sign it. So we can continue doing that. And if we both get a copy of this, then we can replay the game and make sure that it's correct because the other person cannot forge my signature. So this will work. However, I can still take out my own move, write down something else, and sign that. So how can we make sure that this game is going to be played in a fair way? Let's once more reset. So my opponent has opened. And rather than just writing down my own move, I also write down his move. And I'll sign that. Now my opponent will do the same. This forms a chain and it's impossible to, act, to take something out and to forge it. I can change my own move, however, my opponent will have that move written down as well. So those two papers will no longer fit on each other. The chain will be broken. So this is one of the basic elements of the blockchain. Together we create this set of papers, what we call a ledger. So you can see this works really well with two players. We both write down our moves, creating this chain. And since we both have a copy of the chain, it's very safe. Now imagine another set of players with their own boards. What they can do is they can also write down their moves and add it to the centralized ledger. This is even more secure as now not two persons, but four persons have a copy of that ledger. However, it also has disadvantages. You can see the more players, uh, the more players that are added, the more crowded it becomes. The, the size of the table is limited, so the number of people that can participate is also going to be limited. Since we're just playing a game together, there's not a real reason for everybody to add their moves to one single centralized ledger. Let's move back a little to the position where it was just the two of us creating a ledger together. In our case, these games really don't have a lot to do with each other. So perhaps it's better for us to form our, form our own ledger. This is a little bit less secure, but we can take some steps to add that security to this setup. How exactly, we'll talk about next week.